him on something that can run teleport, maybe match the split push that that Twisted Fate would have provided, and then maybe even be an assassin to just outright take him out. Oh, we'll see exactly what they do to adapt to this one because, of course, Dials do move to the red side. They have that counter pick opportunity. Remember, they picked Twisted Fate from the blue side as well. Gaze Chiefs the opportunity to pick into it and then found the victory. But Chiefs are going to ban away the Jacks this time. Azir and Elise also going to go as LeBlanc and Shen once again taken away by the Dials. I believe. They're waiting on a Vladimir, we'll see whether they do take that one off. Yeah, and you know, all things considered from that first game, I think the determining factor was more so the Jacks in the middle lane in general. So the draft was good from the Direwolves because it gave them the Twisted Fate. It was what it was from the Chiefs. Like, Victor's still a good pick. Swiffer can still play that Victor to a super high level. Oh yeah. It rounded out their team composition with a lot of damage. <laughs> to be picked up in this rotation with Jungle as well, knowing it's the Rek'Sai, side, perhaps they default back to the Gragas again. That would be an expectation. We know that Sybil has a couple of our champions up his sleeve though. Yep. I believe you were spectating Sybil playing uh, I was Zach actually, today. Yeah. I was watching him play it. But we do know that he just loves playing the champion just in general. And Fantix will see what he decides to pick up here, potentially for regret, or whether he decides to lock away his own champion. Because, of course, we're waiting for both solo lanes out of the Chiefs in our next round. And he's probably wanting some sort of counter pick. Alistar for regret. Braum. See what they do decide to lock in. One second to go. And it will be Braum. So Ezreal Braum towards the bottom side of the map. And that's the Zack. So Sybil, back to his blob of goo. And what better a champion to actually cover 3,000 units of distance <laughs> to get into a Jin <laughs> Ultimate. That is very <laughs> true. Then a Zack, yeah. So... Decent clearing champion, of course, has unique gank pathing, similar to a Rek'Sai and Shaker, which is what makes him quite potent. Yeah. The Gragas was super useful, but I think Zach can fill a similar vein of thought there and that you can get into that middle lane from the side, but brushes. 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 <laughs> right get then. into them side brushes. Yeah, <laughs> Level <they're> four. <laughs> Fantastic English. <laughs> Very English, in fact. Yeah, no, the Zack's got a lot of utility. Whoa! Okay, so Swiffo is going to be playing that Karma in the mid lane as Ejim picks up the Thresh, and that's a Lowey once again for Swiper. I like this. Mixing it up. Yeah, absolutely. I actually do still rate the Lowey quite highly. It's almost like a stand in front of the Jin composition that the Chiefs have compiled for themselves. It does indicate as well that Karma is the mid laner of choice. Well, we have Thresh in the support role. And that's pretty awesome to be playing with you. Yeah. Because there is very few things that can actually kill the Jin. Let alone the Alawi that's going to be healing a ridiculous amount and to have a Karma shield it. We'll see how the Chiefs are going to be able to play this one out. Alawi into Trundle. 
Feels like something that would be okay for Alawi because she doesn't necessarily like to build a lot of tanky stats early on. Possibly could do it's, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I mean, like, Alawi's good into anyone that wants to hit Alawi, opposed to you having to hit them. That's yeah. the rule of thumb, and that same thing applies to skirmishes and team fights. Chiefs, as a finished team composition, are entirely running a kite back comp to play around these objectives, to have vision control, and to let the direwolves engage on them with the Zac, with the Twisted Fate, even with the Braum. Yeah. And just to draw a line in the sand and say, if they cross this point, the Alawi ult's here. Well, you can see Chiefs now set up. Fantix understandably locks in the Twisted Fate one more time over on that red side, does know exactly what the Chiefs are bringing to the table, and is going to take that TF once again into them. So once again, Dai will set up for 1-3-1. May not have as much maneuverability, but with Ezreal, we'll be able to at least stay relatively safe, not to mention stand behind me in Elastic Slingshot there from Sybil. We'll be able to help out as far as getting them away if Chiefs decide to engage. And the immediate adaptation from the Chiefs is noteworthy and that Karma's running the teleport. So can still yep. wave clear effectively one of the strengths that Karma provides and will be able to deal with what Fantix is doing in side lanes whenever he starts to become that pest that a twisted fate always is. Yeah, and I actually really like what both teams have done here because the Direwolves have identified the fact that they want to play 1-3-1. Mm -hmm. They know that that worked in game number one and it was very, very close to start off with mm -hmm. and then they just organically got themselves the lead. So don't change your style. Make sure that the Chiefs have to adapt to it. And over on the side of the Chiefs, they certainly have. This is a completely different comp apart from that Rek'Sai who is just generally incredibly versatile anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. If you think the Chiefs can bring this one back, give us a deciding game in this best of three. Use that hashtag CHFWIN. However, if you think the, the Direwolves can take down the Chiefs in back-to-back -back games, use that hashtag DWIN. And Direwolves will actually put themselves on the top of the table after that victory. They absolutely can if they take out the they Chiefs have to. here. 1-0 up. Now need to cement that lead and get the 2-0 here, but the Chiefs biting back with a different team composition, a different flavor, essentially, to their own style. The Direwolves ringing true to them, but with a new addition of a Zac. Yep, I like it a lot. As you can see, Swiffer, he's taking the Deathfire touch here as well, and the Karma wants to make sure that all of his buttons hurt as much as possible. Will mean the late game damage of the Karma has been augmented a little bit. I actually quite like that adaptation, given the fact that she is often known as a champion that has a lot of mid-game damage. Yeah, I mean, you'd still probably want to have a Thunderlords if you're looking to win lane against Fantix, who, for the record, switch to Ignite. He's oh going to be goodness. running the offensive summoner. Swiffer having the teleport is out of necessity because he's against the Twisted Fate. One other thing is we're actually looking at Dark Star Thresh. Oh, cool! Look at him. The back animation is so awesome as well. He needs to do that not in a brush so that we can properly... Uh, no, there's no need to advertise. Okay, so Ray's moving back up. We'll see whether a lane swap is going to ensue. Regret already moving up there. Yeah, it feels like they're actually about to match this. Minions have spawned. Or not. Oh, it looks like they're or they are. So. Oh, or uh, they're oh, not. Oh, oh, oh. They're actually walking down middle lane. Both duo lanes are doing this. The question is, who wants to find the other one? And usually a Braum and anybody wants a standard lane. Who's going to walk over Vision first? They seem to be actively pursuing it themselves. Is that just about to meet each other instead? <laughs> they just oh, hello. High five <laughs> a little bit. Looks like we're not standard, says the Chiefs. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is happening? Ring around the rosy. So this is not ideal for the Chiefs if they decide to go bottom. It's actually a really long period of time. But Swipe is already bottom. No, but Wh seriously? Wh like, they are <laughs> just... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Go to lane! Oh. Edrim's just showing off with so his that's sweet skin. Three minions missing, potentially six by the time Raider gets there. Um, There's been better situations for the Chiefs at level one in League of Legends. I would say so. We'll see whether they can get back up. Oh, he, okay, they got it. That's all right. It's, all right. it's just awkward. It is. It's the kind of decision that you never expect to see the Chiefs make. That's indecisive. Not to mention the fact that now Raze is level 2, and if anyone's got a good level 2, that'd be as well. Transcend. All right, Jim. <laughs> calm down. This is the loudest bottom lane <laughs> ever. <laughs> Dark Star Thresh skin is so annoying. In goes Swiper. He's trying to avoid all of these tentacles. Oh my goodness. That W is noxious. Yeah, big advantage for Sniper, of course, he has the levels. He's doing a lot of damage to Trundle, it's something that just never ends. And even now, 
You want a last hit? <laughs> it's, it's a battle against the tentacles, unfortunately. Yep. Well, Chippies is still able to avoid a few of them. Chomps down on some of these minions and Spooks continuing to path nicely here. He's going to spot Sybil out. Sybil oh, low. Down. Yeah, relatively low against this. He does have smite, back. so if he takes the risk, he will get a lot of health back with that. Spooks unable to smite still up the way, but does once again have a lot of information. But here goes Whoa. Fantix. The Whoa. gold card's there. Wildcard even clips him towards the bottom side, but Spooks is able to slink out, but has to use the flash. Whatever that was, it happened. Yeah. Fantix with a really nice rotation, honestly, albeit super early. Doesn't put himself into the best position now that he's back in lane. But Fantix will be fine. He's a twisted fate. Yeah, nice aggressive play out of Swiffer, though. Gets the Mantra Q on top of Fantix. After taking that gold card to the head. Continues to have a little bit of a lead here in this lane. Such a cool skin. Yeah, really cool. Simple. Don't believe he was spotted here moving towards the top side. He might have been looking to get in the brush before actually going for this. The Chiefs, they're caught. Yeah, there it is. Radio getting hit by two spells at once. Has to use the flash. Red buff ticking down as the hook is going nice to land hook. under Regret. He, there's a lot of minions here as Deadly Flourish flies through, but the exhaust down onto Radio. Regret still wants more. The Ignite's down. He flashes out of the way, but I think he's still dead. Arcane Shift flies through. He's going to survive. Gets the level up as well, but it wasn't needed. Now the Chiefs answer back. That's a lot of summoner spells used on both sides. You can see Chippy's in trouble here on the bottom side as well. Yeah. This allow is throwing a spanner into the works of the Direwolves right now. The Chiefs look entirely different when Swiper is controlling this lane. Raider and Egium in a 2v3 actually almost get themselves a kill also. Yeah. And Spooks hasn't been seen on the map, but it doesn't matter. You can see Chippy's does get the experience for that cannon creep. This is a very different story though, like you said, Rusty. And it's still not too big of a difference between them, let's be perfectly honest. The gold is not representative of anything. The mid lane is still farming and we'll get towards that level 6 point where Fantix has the ability to move around the map. Zach, whilst he was utilizing a level 4 red buff gank, he's getting closer to that level 5 mark. And then it's even easier for him to utilize. We need to start seeing spooks on Summoner's Rift. Yeah, at the moment, just counter jungling here towards the top side of the map. You can see the Zac taking down a Rift Scuttler here as well, as Diwolves find some respite here on the top side of the map. Taking down all of these minions quite effectively. Thank you very much, Turret, says Raze. He's able to lock down that minion, and now Chippy's dealing with Swiper, who I believe just went back, got a pickaxe, and didn't use his teleport to get back to lane. Yeah, big point of the energy, honestly. Yeah. The Chiefs, if they wish to use that teleport, if there's ever a fight that happens top side, it's Spooks. Never mind. Yeah, Spooks is trying to get some work done. As Swift is here as well. They know exactly where they want to be attacking as Sybil walks over a pink ward. Swiper. Definitely playing a champion who doesn't care so much about whether he gets ganked or not. He's more, probably more than happy to kill a couple of people. Maybe at the level 6 mark. Well, Zach has a fair chunk of early damage. But Swiper... I guess when you look at Alawi and you think fight or flight, Alawi defaults to fight. Presses the R key and hopes that the tentacles are enough because of the amount of sustain that you actually get from them. Yeah. You might take one with you, but still even just showing his face on the bottom of the map symbol immediately walking top means that Swiper has to respect. Oh, as well as the fact that Fantix was offside as well as Sybil looking for Swiffer, who's trying to predict the flash there as Swiffer gets gold card. It takes a lot of damage here as Sybil does, of course, have the passive. Throws down the heal as the gold card's going to come in one more time, but it's a brilliant use of the shield. Ooh. Oh, Fantix wanted that next auto attack, but knew it wasn't a stacked deck. Knew he wasn't going to be able to get the kill. Yeah, and unfortunately burns the ignite for that, so Swiffer gets out and actually keeps his summoners. The Chiefs have made a rotation towards his middle lane. Everything evens out, all things considered, but another gank for Zack. And Sybil, making waves. Oh, I think that he's about to find himself a scoop. He's on the rapid camp at the moment, as Sybil does have some so he'll be able to lock away this red buff quite effectively. He doesn't want to deal with the Cinderlings. Cheeky. Now looking for Swiper as well as Chippies, does have Subjugate. That is an obvious one, though. Without knowing where Spooks is, even looking for this is... Oh well, Pillar goes down, Swipe is actually looking for it. Massive damage here as Sybil is in trouble. Has the passive, thank goodness. 
But Fantix will get the Destiny in. Swiper's in trouble, but he's getting a lot of health back from these tentacles. Shippy's in trouble. My god! What is up here? Double kill comes in. He eventually falls, but Spooks looking to answer with a kill under Fantix. That's what we were talking about before. Lowy says, yeah, please, come gank me. I don't care. I'm going to kill you. Welcome to my domain, says Swiper. That's not an easy thing to execute. And not only that, they miss the execution. Plain and simple. Fantix is overstayed. He's about to blue card or red card. Spooks could, but doesn't. Lots of minions. But again, that's just... I feel like they could have killed him if the Zack knockup actually connected. But see, the Trundle Pillar forces him into the fight response. The amount of damage and health regeneration that you find coming from this, as well as Fantix arriving late. I don't know if he was reacting to it, but the communications obviously should be there. One of the better interactions as well is Swiper's uh, Q does yeah. full damage to all of the Bloblets and instantly kills the Zack. I don't think we'll see Zack picked into a Lowy again. That's how this is going to go. Oh, of course, it was the Alawi pick into the Zack, which might have been actually a cue that the Chiefs took in order to know that they can pick that champion once again. Because you mentioned to me the fact that, you know, you play one sort of style when you have the Alawi, it's the when they want to come to you. And if there's ever a champion that wants to come to you, it's Mr. Slingshot, man. I mean, if there's ever also a team that wants to come at you, it's usually the Direwolves. Is good point. Delicate. I don't know if they want this again. Well, nice exhaust comes in as Raze is looking for Swiper. Regret is in trouble. But Raze still looking for it. There's the slow. Raze gets forward. One more auto attack will do it. And he locks down the kill. The tower not going to stay on him as Chippies is in trouble. Flashes out of the way of the last <laughs> bolt. <laughs> Just presses every single button at once. Yeah. Chippies does get out. Sybil, on the other hand, may not. He's got flash. He does. Slingshots his way out. I was expecting the flay from Ejim, but he gets out as soon as he can. Chippies is sitting topside. Sybil was looking to help him, but the Chiefs managed to get themselves no kills, but they will get themselves the turret. The flip side, though, the Diables can actually get a Lowy. Sybil once again going to be slingshotting his way across the rift. See, after all of that action towards the bottom side of the map for Fantix, though, he's fallen behind in the farm to the tune of about 20. I'm not going to lie, any day of the week you'd look at a top laner and say 1v2 against Braum Ezreal, no thank you. Swiper didn't have his ultimate in that last trade. Yeah. And it was close to being off cooldown. So I would, I would not even have been shocked if he just walked back down here and said, let's go boys, do it again. <laughs> Round two. Double or nothing. Which is exactly what that would have been. Yeah. Well, has himself a longsword, looks to be building towards a black cleaver, as well as possibly a death dance. It looks like a lot of AD. For this Alawi so far, Deadly Flourish going to fly through as the Chiefs transition their map pressure towards the bottom side. Yeah, no turret to actually be seen from the Direwolves, so the Chiefs matching them this time around and actually besting them in the macro play, even though it was reactive. This just comes down once again to swipe on this Alawi. He's an issue. Oh, yeah. Sybil looking for Radir, has to flash this time. Stretch Armstrong will come out as Deadly Flourish locks up Sybil. He may have bitten off too much here as the Let's Bounce comes out. Ejim misses the death sentence as the teleport is cancelled now from Swiffer in the mid lane. Interesting movements from Sybil. He actually flashes to knock up Ejim and, and knock him away. And so now they find themselves in an opportunity where the Chiefs look like they could have pushed something. It was Swiffer's teleport. Swiper definitely just wants the 1v1. Nobody dies, though. They were lucky to dodge that death sentence. Most certainly were. Oh, Merlin Omicron completed here by Swiffer in response to the Rod of Ages that is done here from Fantix. These hooks just look so cool. I know, right? Albeit a reasonably concealed animation. <laughs> just looks majestic, that skin. You can see it spooks. Going to glide on past Sybil, who's now backing away. We'll complete... Is Cinder Hulk by the looks as he heads back to base. There it is. 42 to 41, so no real difference here as far as jungle farm is concerned. Yeah, just the uh, side stone is the major difference between the two. There's, oh, there's the Whoa. destiny. Nice play out of Ejim. Has to use the flash for it. As Radia now in trouble towards the bottom side of the map. True Shot Barrage flies through. Radia in trouble. Raze attacks the turret, which is a bad news story. But Raze is able to pick up that kill and get out of turret range. He actually attacked the turret twice there, Raze. They now have no mana on the Ezreal. Well, Death Sentence is going to get Ejim in. He just wants to find the flay. Is raised. He will fall. Swiffer grabs himself the kill. 
good play from Ijin. They consolidate that kill that was predictably going onto Raid Air. It was backed up with the flash play to actually kick it off in the first place. Swiper will fight them. Yeah, I don't know about this. It. And they're trying to make sure that he doesn't get multiple people with his leap of faith. Get him, Swiper. However, Swiper just says, yeah, come and fight me. Three of them, maybe. Yeah, well, Fantix doesn't have Destiny, of course. There's the Subjugate. Swiper throws down the ultimate as Sybil, I believe, doesn't have his passive yet. Fantix picks it up with a wild card, thank goodness. Because I would have thought that Swiper could have almost got back with three tentacles doing that amount of damage. But actually, Woo! surprisingly good in the way that uh, Fantix played that one out. Zoned away the wreck side, didn't let him get in and knock anybody up to give more time to Swiper. Any further sustain. The Trundle matchup is still okay into allowing. You do use your passive to get health back from the tentacles, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's more so that you can just pop your ultimate and on a champion that doesn't even have resistances, like, make him useless, mostly in a ganking scenario. Team fights, of course, it doesn't work like that. But you've got a rec site for that past that point. That's a good point. Slapper now does have his black cleaver done, though. He's looking very strong here on the map, and we'll see whether he does go to Death Stance with the pickaxe, whether he's going to start building some sort of defensive item. Maybe some form of armor might be worthwhile just for weathering this lane, but at the moment, 124 to 108. He's farming out very nicely, 2, 3, and 0. Very happy is the Alawi. She's still looking to make some more proactive movements around the map this time. Direwolves are looking to answer. They certainly are, as Regret throws down the wall. Ejim, relatively low here on this Thresh. Spooks, however, he's not. He's looking very comfortable. He's Cloud Drake. Drake number one. No one really looking at that one just yet. Spantix looking to clear out this minion wave. Will do so relatively easily. Already has 10% Sybil. CDR as Sybil. Yeah, looking for Ejim. He's going to dodge out of the way, but there's the box. Ultimate comes down. My god, Let's Bounce is going to lock up the kill on the support. Teleport's coming in. Swiffer. He's already down towards the bottom side. Swiper doesn't have his, cannot answer, but is moving from the top side of your screen. Direwolves have got that one pick. See whether they can get any more. They do force the disengage. Swiper, of course, is present, and Jin, surprised that he, that he didn't ult there, even yeah. just to put down damage. The end result of this is another nice pick for Direwolves. Onto Ejim, who unfortunately actually flayed Sybil into a position where the Let's Bounce knocked him towards the team. The Direwolves, anyway. It's still, honestly, a position of power for Direwolves if they want to start utilizing the map movements that they're capable of doing. Sybil's bridged himself to that level 9 point. Fantix has got his big item, now working on the second. But the Chiefs have answered in a very resoundingly similar way. They've got Wave Clear in that middle lane. They want to have Kill Threat as a top lane. But this time, it's slightly more effective in both departments. It looks like Swiffer as well going towards Rabidon's Death Cap for item number two. Could potentially be the Luden's Echo. But I would like Rabidon's just because he is that utility-style champion there in the mid lane. Extra AP means a whole lot more when you're not necessarily purely doing damage. It depends if you want damage over time or the initial burst of the Luden's. Yeah. The extra wave clear as well. You can single queue the backline. Victor doesn't need that, of course. Still saves the Rylays. I wouldn't expect that, but just hey, that could be cool. Yeah. Slow on the Q may not necessarily feel like enough. Now they shouldn't look towards Swiper's lane any further. He does have a black cleaver, so if they use the Twisted Fate, he's killable. In terms of health bar, he's not that durable unless he has his ultimate. So the Twisted Fate will lock down, stun the follow-up, and the rest of the team could be there. But this is where the Direwolves can't execute on this strategy because they're keeping Fantix super busy. Well, they certainly are. As Reyes is looking to protect his jungle. Got some vision around here as well as Spooks bullied out of the jungle. Nice Winter's Bite lands through the tunnel. And still and set up good. really well to succeed. Look at where the kills are distributed to the Dials roster. The major conflicting difference <laughs> is that the Bushman doesn't actually have himself any kills. Well, at the moment he is in the bush. Now Swiper does have the flash available, throws down the ult, but my god, Chippy's with his ravenous Hydra. So much damage, and Dials clean up the allow. Yeah, the best thing about versing the allow is crowd controls the direct counter, and what does Zack have in abundance? C crowd control. Yeah, he absolutely has crowd control that you can't even cleanse, because they're knock up. Spook's now very deep. Makes a dark lantern to safety. But this is the exact thing that like is working for the Dials that they're going to continue to do. Spooks' response is to look at the other side of the map and get global gold for the team. 
It's not working out because Diawall's getting these kills on a swipe. It can match trades. Now Chupis is getting kills. Sybil has established a lot of this now lane presence for Chippies. And they're always going to have a relevant Twisted Fate in this middle lane. He's just wave clearing to his heart's content. It's 2 and 0 anyway. Yeah, precisely. And Fantix wasn't nearly this far, uh, I guess, I'm, I'm not going to say ahead because he's still down by about 20 CS, but he was having a worse time last game on the TF. And we know that he was still able to be very, very important come the later stages. Once again, Rift Herald is going to now go over to the Direwolves. As I believe it wasn't taken at all in the last game. Always counted by the Chiefs. Diawals now has themselves about a 300 gold lead, but it is nothing. Once again, this game is so close from both of these teams. Yeah, but as the dust settles, of course, of the recent trade that we just saw, the Chiefs, they've pushed bottom side. They don't look towards the Drake as it's a cloud. Diawals, they push top side. They don't look towards Drake. They actually look towards Rift Herald, so they get a slight advantage in that respect. But the biggest change is that they get a mid lane hurl with this. They're now starting to up that tempo. Got some item spikes. Feeling good for a 5v5 because Swiper doesn't want to be split any further. Well, there's the hook actually onto Sybil as well as... There's Swiper. He does land the E, but Sybil is going to make it to safety very easily. He's cruising on out of there. Yeah, he's going to have a Spirit Visage as that champion anyway. Fantix not having the best time in 1v1, but that's to be expected against Akama. Yeah. He's pretty good in that department. And again, this is the conflicting strategies of these teams now starting to hit that mid-game point where it's super important. Whoa, Fantix! Curtain Call comes in, flashes out of the way of one of them and dodges the fourth. Wow, that's a free summoner spell there for the ultimate out of Radio. Definitely worthwhile. Yeah, and the best part is the first hits. And if the first one hits on Jin, you can hit all of them. And just like that, a summoner from a Twisted Fate could ultimately hurt him. Does still get his big item spike. And again, those big conflicting differences between these teams. The Chiefs now look towards the 5v5s, utilize Alawi in these team fights. They want to have Swiper there. They only have double teleport simply to damage control what the Diables could implement if they get any further into the lead. Because as it stands, a 2-0 Twisted Fate. Pretty good in a side lane. Damn right. And Swiffer actually has gone for the Luden, so you're exactly right. Just wants to be able to clear out these waves a little bit more effectively. That's what he wanted to do against Vantix there as Radio dances some grenades across the top side. It means you don't, have to, head back. It means you don't have to Mantra Q the wave to instantly clear the back line, which is nice because the Mantra Q, like, in terms of augmentation of damage, is unheard of. Oh, Radio just glowing a little bit now. He's going to reload, grab himself all of his bullets. You can see that is going to be a Trinity Force raid, actually. So the Ezreal, we picking that one up. Seen it a little bit in Solo Q. Haven't actually... Had the pleasure of casting one just yet. Yeah. Isn't prioritizing the armor. Doesn't think that he needs to slow down the enemy, more so to speed himself up as Regret's taken a bullet. Yeah, takes a bullet for Ray. Stands behind him there as well as the ultimate flies through just for disengage now as Swiffer has caught Regret out, but might actually fall down himself. True Shot Barrage flies through. Massive knock up there from Sybil. Oh, now Chip is right in the back line. Ejim's gonna fall as well as Ray's getting right in amongst it. Radia falls down, but in goes Swiper. Can he get the work done? He gets stunned up. No. Fantix in potential trouble. That is massive damage out of this Alawi. This Fantix God. is eventually able to get that work done. It's four dead on the side of the Chiefs. As there's the Destiny. Sybil's now looking for Spooks as he now has a gold card lined up. Doesn't have Flash, of course. And Spooks is going to get out to the other side of the map, which gives Diawals room to get to work on this outer turret. And they win themselves the team fight in a situation where they should not be winning that team fight. Because the lantern that is given to Swiffer puts them on top of Sybil. The engage from this Zack was just unreal. Direwolves, they play from strength to strength. They're now dead though. Yeah, the teleport comes in. Fantix avoids the Mantra Q. It's not going to be quite enough. And that is actually passive down as well here for Sybil before he falls. They can decide to give it to whoever they want as Radia is going to be the benefactor of that, and the outer turret stands, so nice teleport play there out of Swiffer. So they should actually go straight to Baron here, potentially the Chiefs. Egypt mechanically does well, Swiffer's teleport was fantastic. They've now got themselves a 3v5 where there's no mid lane and no jungle for the Direwolves. As far as power plays are concerned, this is going to come down to a steal, potentially, from the Direwolves. 3v5, so risky. 
Yeah, Ray's looking for it right now. True Shot Barrage flies through. Remember, ultimate still available there from Swiper as Chippies is going to fall potentially, but doesn't as he flashes himself out. Lower health bars here on the Chiefs, as that's a huge shield out of Swiffer. This Baron is going to fall eventually as Ejim possibly in trouble as Ray's going one versus four. A few of the buttons are going to miss there as Chippy slowed down. And now Ray's still going forward. In goes Regret. They want more out of this as Tentacles are starting to do some work on the back end. Chippy's still slowed and the Chiefs will take five members with a Baron. Yeah, and only barely they actually get out alive. Now the Direwolves against a Baron buff five-man roster of the Chiefs suddenly on the back foot because they overstayed to try and get the turret that Fantix just took down. Big risk. The reward was not there, but the Chiefs, they play that same game and they come out ahead. Yeah, that's a dust blade now completed here from Radier as well. You can see Swiffer building towards what could be the Void Star. To be fair, that dust blade is actually really greedy from Radier. Oh, okay. More of Malmordius, or at least the Hex Champion. I'd say would have been nice from him against a Zack Twisted Fate. And Ezreal. Yeah. True but Barrage does a lot of damage. Nonetheless, he has his Dusk Blade. Good snowball item. Raze as well now has Trinity Force as well as uh, that Vampire Acceptor. So there's a lot of power that he's just managed to pick up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The damage that he's putting out will be quite large, but as for what he's, when he's going to be doing it, I'd say not just yet. See, this inner turret does not last long in the hands of the Chiefs. As now they're moving over towards the middle of the map. You can see Fantix heading towards the top side, wants to be able to push this one out as the Chiefs ping it. They know where they want to start getting some control. And Raze has been stepping up more and more lately. So for the 5 1 member of the team, the yeah. 3 1 Twisted Fates are back in. The Direwolves by no means are out of this one yet. However, the Chiefs on the flip side, they do get themselves a quick and easy bottom turret. Now Raze is actually. Yeah, in trouble does use his E in order to shift his way out as the ultimate comes through. Ray's in trouble. Oh my goodness, that's the snipe out of Radia. Big deal as they get rid of that Ezreal. And now Fantix going to have to move back towards the mid lane, but this Baron buff is going to help them take down this inner turret very easily. The pings are now on the Twisted Fate, who does need to be careful where he walks. Yeah. Now 5 and 2 as well as this Ezreal actually chooses not to stand behind his Braum. Sybil now caught. Another possible pick up here as that Dust Blade is going to go off. The Pop is going to pick up the kill. This Radier is huge right now. Trundle once again going to have his soul just obliterated by this Chief's roster. And now they're looking for this inhibitor in the mid lane. The yeah. Very different Chiefs in game number two. And this exact outcome of this inhibitor going down is why Jin was banned. Yeah. Because the W lockdown followed by the ultimate gets them raised. The second aspect of that gets them Sybil. Jin, such a good AD carry right now. And they've let the Chiefs pick that one up. And look at what it's gotten them. Yeah, the Chiefs know exactly what the priority is as well as they managed to nab that one as, as, as their first pick. Ocean Drake going to fall down. Second Drake of the game here going over to the Chiefs. And they'll empowered recall back home and pick up a plethora of items. That is Mortal Reminder almost completed here from Radio at the same time as Spooks. We're just going to watch him take a bit of a farm journey towards the Raptor. Yeah, locking that Raptor bit down now. Direwolves actually on the back foot. Decent gold lead for the Chief. It's not too large. Only about 4,000 here. And the Baron is just about to run out. So in terms of power plays, that's still successful from the Chiefs, but only to a certain extent. Chippies against the flow, he's going to be able to take down this outer turret. Remember, still has that Rift Herald buff. Still for another about 10 minutes or so. Just over. Picked it up at about 19, I believe. Now, yeah, still farming well across the board for both of these teams. Now, man, the Q's starting to do some real work. The Spooks is basically untouchable on this Rex side. It's interesting that the Chiefs have adapted through a Karma in the middle lane also. It's a good choice, because it's more of a bully control mate. But it's absolutely decimating. Yeah. Poke. Doing a lot of work, and Sybil is actually looking for Ejim and Spooks right now. Concussive blows is going to land. Yeah, really nice hook onto Chippy Two flashes, but can't get out of the way of the Deadly Flourish. In goes Fantix. He's trying to get some work done off the backside as Ray's getting all the auto attacks he wants off onto this Chief's roster. But Sybil again. Yeah, once again caught out of position. Does have the less bounce. Will knock the Chiefs around. But look at this AoE 
That is gigantic. No one's going to fall just yet. Oh, of my course, God. The passive is in. How did he land that hook? There's nothing Raze can do can get him out of there. And there's the curtain call. Radius still wants more, but actually he's going to cancel that towards the end. Now Chief's looking for this inhibitor turret towards the top side. 27 minutes in. Chief's looking to knock down the front door of the Direwolves. Hijim just stamps the foot down and says it's time to win this game. Yep. And actually just hooks everybody repeatedly until there's someone dies. The Chiefs, I don't think they can actually finish with Fantix still here for wave clear. Chiefies as well has teleport if they choose to get an incredibly large flank off. Doesn't feel like that's how they're going to play this one out because the Chiefs still in total control. There's the destiny. It was a uh, recall check. If someone was recalling by themselves, they would have died. Chiefs still a five main thing. Even going to hold hands to the base. I'm not going to leave anything up to chance here. Swift up locks down the Rift Skull and does so quite easily as Raze almost has his Blade of the Ruined King, but he's well and truly falling behind Radio, building up to his fourth item in the form of some sort of zeal purchase. Costly items, to be fair. Yeah. From Raze in comparison. That's a good point. And I think as far as gold is concerned, the AD carry of Dialg is one of the stronger members. Looking past that point, we're still really yet to see much from Fantix in this game. Even though the score says be 3-1, and one, it hasn't been fully reflected. It does have a big item spike now, though. Yeah, it does have that Rabidon's death cap. Will help him clear up minion waves very effectively, which he'll need to do. Chippies is dead. Oh, dear. Throw a pink ward in there. There it is. Locks down the snare. There's the hook. The chain CC comes in. It's all too easy as Chippies falls to the hands of the Chiefs. 20 seconds to go on that Baron buff. Teleport is there, but Chippies will need 20 seconds of time bought for him, and I believe the Chiefs will be able to take down this Baron within that. Yeah, there is two inhibitors dead, and Direwolves, even if they look to stop it, could run themselves into a position they don't want to be. Because if they die, they actually just lose the game. Chip is not going to be available to control the minions, and that was very deep in Chippy's positioning. The Chiefs, they've kicked it off. Yeah, so Swiper already setting up a bunch of tentacles in this pit as well, so my goodness, every time he presses that W, a whole bunch of the health bar, that Baron Bar falls, and the Chiefs are down just patrolling around the outside. They've got so much vision, it will easily be able to take down the Purple Worm. Swiper sort of feels a little bit like he's killing his own brethren, or his own little pets. They are going to be able to lock that one in there, so... Inhibitor's about to come back up in the mid lane. But it's a 6,000 gold lead in the Chiefs. We're going to play this one suffocation mode as per usual. Did you just call a worm a tentacle? Kind I would of. be so offended if I was a tentacle. What do you mean? I feel like a worm would be a little bit more of a, you know, actual creature than a tentacle. I thought a tentacle was more of a limb. You still compared them. I'm just like, you're just they like, look relatively they're similar. They're actually eating them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's good. Well, oh, yeah, in goes Sybil. Swiffer is going to get knocked up. There's the ultimate from Regret, but may have gone in the wrong direction there as Wildcards are flying through from Fantix. Swiper, Whoa, huge Swiper. in the middle of this fight, but Fantix is able to lock him down. Flashes back into his team here as Sybil looking for some knock up. Swiffer still alive with a huge shield as Radia now going to find his way into the fight. They've got the one pick off. If Direwolves can survive, they may actually be able to find something here. Destiny's going to come in. Sybil for the re engage, but they don't get the knock up onto Swiffer. And Fantix now caught out. It is going to be, oh my god, Radia in trouble. Deadly Flourish locks down Fantix. His last move actually locks down the kill Chippies on the mid laner. And the Direwolves is, yeah, Chippy's still trying to get in here. Raise over the top as well. A lot of and damage. Death Sentence is going to go wide. As now Concussive Blows stacking onto Swiffer. The auto attack's coming down from Raze. The shields are everywhere, though, as Spooks. Over the side, Raze here as well. He's going to survive by Chip getting over the wall. might be dead. Swiffer, how are you still alive? He has so many shields. The Direwolves, they look for a fight. Regret needs to be careful here. Raze Seeker probably won't be able to do it. As Raze gets over to the side. That was so close, but Direwolves Swipe do Swiffer's teleporting for a flank to end the game, potentially. What? He was under the Nexus turrets. Okay. Jeez. They're so close. Now the Chiefs need to actually look to maybe cement this, get themselves the third inhibitor, maybe push mid again and try and actually re-get the third inhibitor, but that's four strong. Oh, fantastic play there oh under Sybil as well. Him. True shot barrage over a few members here as Vantix looking to lock down the members of the Chiefs. 
We still have Leap of Faith available here from Swiper. He doesn't have Flash. Another, another play onto Sybil, who's let's bouncing around, but can't quite get the CC. Swiffer still in here. He's got so much mana. He looks so comfortable. As there's the knock-up, another play comes in from Ejim. What is this guy on the Thresh? As there's the Leap of Faith. Swiper going to town on the Direwolves. That's the last kill there for Radier as Fantix is fighting Spooks, but that's not what he wants. Deadly Flourish is not going to find it, but Spooks locks down the kill. The Chiefs are back <laughs> and will take game number two after getting rid of every structure that the Direwolves held dear. It feels weird to say, but give the Chiefs allowing, they look like an entirely different team. But most importantly to me, Ejim just went insane. That last team fight was a Thresh highlight reel. Something that Ejim has done time and again, actually. It feels like the Ejim Alley God, once he went to his first international, yeah. became Ejim does not miss a Thresh hook ever. But it was the Flays that was actually stopping the Zaxx engage. Really impressive. Yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful game from the Chiefs, and that's going to tie up the series. So let's throw it back to the analyst desk to break down the Chiefs win. And a night and day performance from the Chiefs means that we are going to head to game number six of the night, game number three of this series. And you know, for us, this is why I love being the host so much, because, you know, throwing Chish under the bus like that, he picks out that cop, that face red. That was so much better. So, yeah, still, I stand very firm on the first comp. This composition, though, this was a super cool composition. And so uh, we're just going to break this down really quickly. Like, first and foremost, Fighting this comp in a jungle is almost impossible. Everyone saw that Alawi's yep. tentacles are coming out everywhere. Uh, Radier played so much better on Jen than we've seen him previously in this performance. But it's kind of like this anti-dive composition. Like, you can't get back there. And what it lacks in hard engage potential, because your only hard engage is going to be your death sentence and your unburrow effectively, as well as like a karma speed up, is that it's so good at sieging. So it's kind of like an anti engage siege composition, which empowers the Chiefs beautifully because anytime the direwolves would want to fight them, pretty much negated it. They couldn't do it at all. Uh, and then anytime the Chiefs wanted to walk up to a tower, not only do you get to throw down the Jen ultimate, but what we didn't really get to see is Alawi is actually fairly decent at sieging well, especially if she gets that vessel, just pulls you under, starts laying down the, the tentacles under the tower, and you quickly have to abandon that. All right, cool. Yeah. Let's get Razid here. Yep, nice, nice three-minute speech. I like Wait, it. Wait, no. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the early game later on, but like, what can you do against the Alawi, right? They had to allocate three people, three people, to d try and deal with the split. Like, they couldn't split against Alawi. You can't team fight against Alawi. At that point, it was just like, and of course, you're right about the sieging point. Like, there was, it had a lot of raw power. And you can see with like, a f maybe you'll see it in the highlight videos, right? With how like big swifts was coming through. And so that was really solid in that front. It's, it's amazing. So I guess we can talk about the early yeah, game a little it. bit. So yeah, it was pretty interesting. You could, I could, I, I could feel the tilt coming out of sw uh, Swiper because that was he was getting. I, the Chiefs didn't know how to handle it very well. Um, so pretty much he was getting like two v one, three v one, and there was no answer coming from the opposite side of the map. Especially because you know, first time around, you know they dive him three v one. He mm -hmm. picks up a double kill. You know, does fall down, comes back to lane. All of a sudden, you know, he goes top lane. He gets like collapsed on one more time. No one's taking turrets and things like that because yeah. they're trying to freeze. Be very, very selfish with their farm. This is something that you're saying. You know, you have to be able to cross map. If your top lane is doing that much work for your team, you have to have his back. But you know, one thing I do want to talk about is the fact that they pulled it back together. About 20 minutes onto the, into this game, looked like the Chiefs hit the flicks, re, uh, switch, realized that there are objectives to take on the map, and you know they systematically just pulled the Wolves apart. Uh, and I think it was also got very clever about where they were pulling them apart. They were setting up team fights beautifully. Again, we never really got to see the power of Alawi underneath a siege because it was all of these team fights. And they saw that the Dire Wolves were more than happy to come and fight them to try to make these flanking pays in the jungle, and they just set up beautifully for it. So normally where we complement the Chiefs is when they outsmart their opponents by maneuvering around on the map and playing macro. Dire Wolves still played a very beautiful macro game, especially early, but the Chiefs completely outmaneuvered them in these team fights. Yeah, they certainly did, and we are going to go to game number three. We could talk about it for days, but unfortunately, guys, we have to go to a three-and-a-half-minute break. But don't worry, when we return, we'll get the final game of the night between the Chiefs Esports Club and the Dire Wolves.